I'm going to talk about uh, policy, supposed to talk about policies on uh, electric 20 wheelers in Asia. We don't have that uh, breadth or much uh, uh, latitude in terms of knowing all the various policies in, uh, in Asian countries, so, but we have some and we would like to share this. Uh, just to put again into context, Asia has the most number of conventional motorcycles and scooters in the world. Uh, traditionally, we have uh, been using these modes of uh, transport uh, in all uh, in most of the countries from China, India, uh, Southeast Asia. And uh, we also see that uh, the emissions of uh, motorcycles and scooters can be substantial. The upper part of the graph shows uh, uh, CO2 emissions and the lower graph shows particle emissions. And if you look at, this is an old slide, uh, by the way, uh, already, but if you look at uh, the third scooter, electric scooter, using the Chinese energy mix, uh, the CO2 emissions uh, is not also that high. And, and also the particle emissions is, is quite low as well, uh, even compared to uh, an advanced passenger car. In looking at uh, conventional two and three wheelers, I always like to put this into context uh, in terms of uh, the use of uh, two and three wheelers. It's good that uh, GIZ, uh, with support from uh, Sudhir Gota, has prepared uh, one of the source books that looks at uh, two and three wheelers. And in there, they outline like, uh, okay, you have motorized two and three wheelers, and uh, these are can be further divided into uh, private trips, commercial trips, uh, three wheelers as well, and also three wheelers used for informal public transport. And in Asia, we have all of this. It's definitely widely used for passenger and freight. It provides uh, livelihood for a majority of um, citizens, especially the lower income uh, sector. We have seen as well that uh, it has become indispensable with the rise of uh, e-commerce. I'm sure most of you have been ordering food online and these have been, are being delivered to you either by motorcycle or by bicycle. And uh, yeah, again, just further highlighting the importance of uh, uh, two and three wheelers in this uh, pandemic. It's also important for us, for us to, uh, to remember that a large percentage of urban trips are within six kilometers and easily covered by walking, cycling, electric bicycles and other two wheelers. I think uh, I've seen some uh, representatives from cities as well in this uh, training course. And I hope we put this into mind that uh, we need to support uh, facilities for other modes of transportation, like walking, cycling, especially because uh, this can easily be used for trips that are especially lower than uh, six kilometers. But having said this, uh, six kilometer trips and beyond or five kilometers uh, you will see that the uh, electric sorry that uh, motorcycles and scooters are being widely used uh, this chart shows the global exports of bicycles and motorized two-wheelers and uh, we have uh, in terms of global trade of vehicles you see in 2019, uh, the number of bicycles being exported has uh, greatly increased. This also include uh, two wheelers and uh, while others like uh, light duty vehicles, freight vehicles, buses, vehicles and component has actually gone down um, in 2020, uh, 2019. And we've also seen a sharp increase in the trade of electric two wheelers. Uh, this is just the chart that shows from 2017, uh, where uh, they have uh, from uh, UN Comtrade and Trade Map, where they have integrated electric two and three wheelers, or sorry, electric two wheelers into the database. You can see that uh, the number of electric two wheelers have uh, greatly increased. Uh, I think I already mentioned uh, shorter trips and uh, uh, it's just important for this slide to take note of uh, lower speeds because this will be important later on when we talk about uh, the policies. 
in terms of the experience, yes, now in China, we have more than 300 million uh, electric two-wheelers. This started in the early 2000s. Uh, I would even say that the, initially it was not really stimulated uh, or driven by policy, but there were a number of urban policies that uh, influenced this. Several cities in China have banned uh, motorcycles or conventional motorcycles in city centers, and this has led to the increase of uh, electric two-wheelers. And uh, again, just to imagine all of this, uh, China has produced in 2020 113 million units of conventional two-wheelers or maybe just say two-wheelers uh, and at the same time uh, 34 million units of this are electric and uh, they have many uh, manufacturers uh, locally and uh, primarily it's sold domestically at the moment. And uh, actually I'm surprised, I thought this would be also much bigger, but in terms of uh, exports, uh, they only export 5% of this uh, electric two wheelers. It's also important to take note of the chart at the bottom. This is like uh, electric bicycle ownership uh, by household. And uh, if you see at the countryside and city comparison, uh, it says per 100 households and 75 per 100 households in the countryside own electric two-wheelers. And in the city, this is uh, 58 uh, uh, units or 58 uh, electric uh, bicycles per household, per, per 100 households. So again, it's important to take note of that. I'm sorry, I was not able to get uh, a lot more in terms of uh, the policies uh, in China, but the chart, the table above shows a comparison of uh, their first uh, policies in 1999 compared to 2019. Uh, first, the electric two-wheeler <clears throat> is only should be about uh, 20 kilometers per hour with a maximum weight of 40 kilograms and engine power of 240 watts using a battery voltage of 36 volts. But in 2019, this was uh, <clears throat> increased uh, for maximum speeds of 25 kilometers per hour, uh, vehicle weight, uh, also equivalent engine power of 400 watts, and battery voltage of 48 volts. And uh, it's also important to take note that electric two-wheelers having the maximum speed of 25 kilometers per hour in China are allowed, allowed to use the bike lanes in uh, cities in China. In India, I would not uh, uh, go into detail, but uh, just to show you the scale, electric two-wheelers, they have 830,000 electric two-wheelers. This data comes from uh, P. Manifold, who we invited for one of these uh, uh, webinars as well to report on the case of India. Uh, information is from 2019, 2020. So comparatively, at that time, it was it had only 830,000 electric two-wheelers, but surprisingly, it already had 2.5 million electric three-wheelers. And again, this is something like the growth of the, the electric three-wheelers in uh, India, you can say, was not initially supported by government policies. It was organically, uh, organically increased uh, and uh, was, uh, I guess, led by the market uh, to increase. We've heard about the FAME uh, subsidies, the FAME policy that are put in place. And these are all uh, very uh, important policies because it is clear. One of the things that Siddharth said, like for a complex country where you have several hundred uh, uh, or even a thousand uh, local government units from states to cities to municipalities. And uh, there is a, national framework that is established, but ultimately it is the states that uh, uh, develop these policies. In 2020, or actually in 2019, we supported the state of Uttar Pradesh uh, to look into their policy on urban move, on uh, electric mobility. And that's the time also where they adopted specific targets for electric two-wheelers, three-wheelers, uh, buses, and also charging infrastructure. Uh, this was uh, 2019 already, and uh, now the government, the state government of Uttar Pradesh has uh, done quite a lot more. 
But another interesting thing here on this slide is the number of uh, engine, uh, or number of manufacturers, the OEMs in India. They have uh, more than 80 plus already for electric two wheelers and more than 100 for electric three wheelers. Again, I guess we should say that this is driven by a national policy that would like to encourage local manufacturing. The question on ASEAN applicability of FAME or FAME, sorry, uh, definitely is possible, but ASEAN is a different uh, uh, institution altogether. And there are several big countries that have big manufacturing uh, uh, capabilities like Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, uh, to a certain extent, the Philippines. And all of these countries also want to stimulate local manufacturing. Maybe this is something that we can discuss uh, in more detail uh, later. Looking into Southeast Asia, there are very few. Um, in Vietnam has the most in terms of uh, electric two-wheelers. They have about 1.4 electric uh, two-wheelers already as of uh, last year in June. In Malaysia and Thailand, uh, only few in the Philippines, uh, mostly registered electric three-wheelers. Uh, we don't have comprehensive information on uh, manufacturers, but uh, we know that there are at least uh, 50 uh, in all the Southeast Asian countries uh, combined. And that's why, actually, when we started looking at this issue of electric two and three wheelers, we thought that the countries in Southeast Asia will face the exports coming from China and India. And uh, now it is the best time for countries to put in place uh, certain standards and policies. The next set of slides uh, that I have will talk about these uh, policies that are uh, made as guidelines uh, for Southeast Asian countries. Uh, this was developed by uh, experts uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, but together with the EV Association in Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and the network in uh, Vietnam. They don't have an association of electric vehicles uh, industry and experts as of the moment. Uh, so together with the experts, I mentioned Professor uh, Horizon Gitano and also Dr. Uh, Biona, uh, who I think is also presenting in this training course tomorrow, uh, helped us develop this. Before we go into the technical uh, regulations, we thought like we must also put policies or review policies on uh, uh, stimulating the use of electric two and three wheelers in general. So one is vehicle tax rationalization, uh, looking at the fees, looking at, uh, of course, having uh, lower fees for these types of vehicles, looking at insurance rationalization, uh, looking at uh, manufacturing support. We saw, uh, especially when these uh, policy guidelines were being developed, that most of the targets, uh, policies in Southeast Asian countries, primarily in Thailand, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia were geared towards uh, four wheelers, like they want to encourage more manufacturing of electric cars, but not so much on the two wheelers. And this is some, somewhere we think uh, we should uh, look into more. Another important aspect is public transport integration. Uh, we are not really able to look at this in detail and uh, associated electric two and three wheeler infrastructure uh, integration. When we talk about uh, infrastructure inter integration, we must remember electric bicycles. Electric bicycles have an equal uh, opportunity to move a lot of people, especially when you uh, put in mind this uh, number that I said most, or 60% plus of, uh, or about 60% of all city trips, uh, urban trips are within six kilometers. And uh, also for uh, preference for lower speeds or adequacy of using lower speed uh, vehicles to, uh, for, for this type of trips. So electric bicycles can definitely serve this purpose. I think the next set of slides, I will not go into detail. I would uh, focus and highlight a few things. But this is about uh, the countries in Southeast Asia or any country uh, for this matter who doesn't have enough technical standards and regulations as of yet uh, for looking at uh, uh, electric two and three wheelers. 
So definitely getting vehicle categories right is important. Uh, we just adopted this uh, also using the recommendations from the EU uh, and the UN in terms of speed. So pedestrian uh, speeds, low speed, low speed, intermediate and high speed uh, as a way of uh, categorizing vehicle categories. We need to look at uh, um, certain capacities, uh, parameters of these electric two wheelers. And we thought these are all important in order to make sure that we have high quality or good quality electric two wheelers coming into the market. This was also influenced by uh, initially there were a lot of low quality electric two wheelers coming into many uh, Southeast Asian countries. And uh, definitely this is not good and uh, does not support um, the promotion of electric mobility in general. As such, uh, these uh, types of uh, regulations uh, should be put in place or should be considered. Looking at uh, uh, tests that looks at flooding and also rain, uh, rain tests. So we have included this in the uh, recommendations to guidelines. Vibration, drop test, knock over test. These are all important for uh, the to test the durability of the products. Um, looking at insulation resistances, uh, short circuit uh, protection, uh, other technical aspect of the vehicle uh, needs to put in place. And uh, in the guidelines, we have provided more information. We also looked at uh, uh, regulations for lights, uh, noise devices. For noise devices, uh, we are not yet certain uh, how this will be handled uh, in detail, or maybe we should leave it to uh, each city, uh, each country in Southeast Asia, uh, because of, uh, of course, most of these vehicles are silent, and uh, in some cases, you would need noise makers so that you don't uh, you avoid uh, conflicts with pedestrians. But in terms of uh, other aspects like labeling, high voltage, battery recycling, uh, these are some of the elements that should be put in place. We have uh, a few more of these uh, uh, technical guidelines. On the table, uh, this is where perhaps we should reflect on, this is a recommendation on where the electric two wheelers can uh, run. If it's pedestrian speed, so less than 10 kilometers per hour, Recommendation is off-road only uh, using bike paths or sidewalks. Slow is the 10 to 25 kilometers per hour. And this should be all roads, uh, urban residential roads, or maybe you say low speed roads, so except highways. Uh, medium speed and high speed. Uh, these are like comparable to motorcycles and uh, should be regulated the same as uh, motorcycles. There are also recommendations in terms of vehicle registration uh, policy. Uh, in the chart, uh, in the data from India, you, um, I think if we can remember that uh, electric two wheelers and three wheelers that have less than uh, 25 kilometers per hour maximum speed doesn't need to be registered. Um, of course, it's up to the country, um, I guess even also for each state or city uh, to regulate this but our recommendations are similar. For pedestrian speed or slow speed, these are up to a maximum of 25 kilometers per hour, no registration needed. And uh, for the rest, you have uh, registration as optional, but for medium speed and high speed, definitely this is something that should be regulated the same as motorcycles. Driver license requirements uh, and safety equipment uh, requirements using of helmets, uh, we have provided some guidance. Also in terms of weight, you will see here four wheelers. There are also light electric vehicles. Uh, there are many in China that are now also being exported or manufactured in Southeast Asia. And we also need to regulate this. And uh, these are like quad bicycles or, or quad EVs. Uh, that are slowly coming into the market, but low speed. And these are some of the uh, categories that we, we have put in place. We have been working uh, together with the other donors, uh, project, uh, sorry, uh, other partners uh, supported particularly by the government of uh, Germany, the International Climate Initiative, 
to look into detail on uh, supporting electric two and three wheelers in uh, Southeast Asia and East Africa. And uh, we have been looking at uh, fiscal policies, regulatory policies, consumer information or labeling. And we do this together with the local partners. Uh, example in uh, the Philippines, in the city of Pasig, together with Philippine Post. But I think you will hear more about this from other people throughout this uh, uh, training course. Similarly, for Vietnam, Vietnam is also developing uh, their own policy now on battery swapping. This is something that I haven't uh, discussed, but uh, many of the Southeast Asian countries are looking into this policy. Uh, similarly for Thailand, Thailand has specific production uh, and use targets for uh, electric uh, two-wheelers, electric cars, electric buses, but they have also adopted more policies for uh, electric two-wheelers, uh, including labeling, uh, which is, should help encourage adoption of these vehicles. So for the last slide, maybe just lastly, uh, I just want to focus on the third slide. If we, uh, as we start developing these policies on electric two and three wheelers, we must uh, try to put it into perspective, integrating this into NDCs, energy efficiency policies, local transport planning and regulations. This is very important. There are many three wheelers, especially in the Philippines, uh, also in Cambodia, that are being used for public transport. These are being regulated by local uh, uh, local authorities, not national authorities. But we need to to assess like uh, the feasibility of the routes, the number of units to make uh, the business viable, all these things. So maybe what I'm trying to say, it's not just replacement of the technology, but we need to look at the whole system as well. And uh, maybe last, uh, the fourth point on electrification of urban freight and waste management, there is huge potential for electric two and three wheelers use and uh, also e uh, electric cargo bikes. So I think I stop here. Thank you very much.